Hello, in this video I'm going to look at a particular computer programming problem. It's a computer graphics programming problem. I'm going to look at it using P5.js and JavaScript, but the ideas would translate into a lot of different environments. And what is that problem? So I'm going to come over here to diagram it for you. Let's say you have a canvas that you're drawing in, and your goal is you want to say, I would like to fill this canvas with circles. I'm going to put the circles all randomly on the canvas. So the goal is for the canvas to ultimately look something like this. Now, notice the way that I drew this. None of these circles are overlapping. The truth of the matter is if you just try to draw 100 circles into, the, into a canvas, into a window, most likely through random probability and chance, they're going to overlap. So how do you guarantee that they don't overlap? Now, there, there are probably a variety of solutions to this, one of which I just thought of, which I think would be great to demonstrate at some point, would be to use some kind of like physics model. So all of these are kind of particles and they, they, they have a repulsion force, so all these things move around and kind of self-organize in this nice spaced out pattern. You might, could even connect spring forces, and that might be referred to as a force-directed graph. Oh, and I just thought of an idea for another video topic that I'll do later. But I'm going to do a simple solution. I'm going to do a solution that's just about circles that don't move, static, having them appear without overlapping. So let's first at least build the program that does this with the overlapping circles. And I'm going to come over here. And I have, ah, so first of all, I think I should need to make the font a little bit bigger. <laughs> so first thing I have is I have a P5.js uh, program here. Uh, this is a JavaScript program. It's got a setup function and a draw function. The setup function is where I'm going to first create the canvas. And I'm going to make a canvas that's 640 by 360 pixels wide. Uh, and then I'm going to do something where I'm just going to say, let's say, how many circles should I do? Let's do uh, 50 to start. And I'm going to pick a random X. And I'm going to pick a random Y. And notice here, what I'm doing here, that I am asking for a random x file value that's between 0 and the width, and a random y value that's between 0 and the height. Now, why not? Let's just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use a variable called r to indicate the radius of the circle. This is probably something you're familiar with, but just in case, if this is a circle and that's the center of the circle, the distance between the center and the outer edge, that's the radius. That's going to be a very important piece of data during this problem. So let's just use a fixed radius right now of 48, for example. And then I'm going to draw a circle at x, comma y. And I'm going to say r times 2. Because in p5.js or processing, uh, if you're using those environments, the, the argument that you give to the ellipse function is actually the diameter, or the radius times 2. But we want to use the radius for math later. So if I do this, and we give them some nice color, like fill some red and some blue, and run this sketch. You can see, and let's give them also a little alpha, and maybe say no stroke. And you can see there's all of our circles. And of course, they're all overlapping. As you would expect, 50 circles, 48 pixels wide, they're not going to be. Now, let's try to actually be a little bit more reasonable about this. Let's make them a little bit smaller, um, and let's only do 25. So, so this looks like now it is mathematically possible to place all these circles randomly without having them overlap. So now we need to adjust this program to do that. How do we do that? So I'm <laughs> going back over here. By the way, I'm just practicing making a video, although this is actually a thing that you might be watching. Uh, and this is a real topic or something you could actually do. Um, OK, so let's think about this. Let's be the computer for a second. Oh my god, please whiteboard, don't fall over. Um, Let's be the computer for a second. So first, I, as the computer, beep, beep, boop, 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 am going to pick a place to draw a circle, randomly here. Now, as the computer, uh, beep, beep, boop, 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 I'm going to pick another place to draw a circle. Now, you can see I got lucky they don't overlap. So the first thing I might want to do is, let's say I am the computer and I'm about to draw a circle. So I pick a spot to draw that circle, but I don't actually draw it yet. I just pick that particular x, y. So the question that I want to answer is, does this circle overlap with the previous circle that I drew? If it does, don't draw it there, throw it away, and pick another circle. If it does not, it's fine, and I can actually draw the circle there. So how do I know, then, if two circles are overlapping? Well, 
The way that I could determine that, and let's look at two other circles that are overlapping, is by looking at the distance between the circles. Here is R1, here is R2. So each one of these circles has a radius, and then there's a distance between them. Notice this is R1 up to here, and this is R2 up to here. If the distance between the circles, you can see it has this extra space, is greater than adding those two radii together, then they're not overlapping. But in here you could see the radius goes all the way to here, the radius goes all the way to here, the distance here, in this case, the distance is less than R1 plus R2. Here the distance is greater than R1 and R2. So the relationship between the distance between the two circles and the two radii of the circles, that is, that is the, all the information you need to determine if the circles are overlapping or not. And P5JS has a function in it, the distance function, which allows, which calculates that distance for you. Now it's not too hard to calculate it on your own. It just involves the Pythagorean theorem. Link to some other place where that's described. <laughs> but for now, I'm just going to, in this particular video, I'm just going to use the distance function. Okay, so let's come back over here and let's look at this program now. So here's the thing. This is happening, this bit of code, this bit of code is happening 25 times. So it happens once. I've got an xy, it draws a circle. Now it happens again. I've got an xy. How do I compare it to the previous xy? Unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a way that I can. I need some mechanism by which I'm going to save all the existing locations of the circles in, uh, save them so I can check new circles against them. And in that sense, we need an array. So what I'm going to do to this code is I'm going to add something. I'm going to add at the top an empty array. In JavaScript, an empty array, open bracket, close bracket. Array being a list of things. And I think a convenient thing that I could do is I could actually say this, var circle equals, and I could make a little object. So instead of, and I'm, I'm sort of typing this out really quickly while I am not talking, um, <laughs> I am making an object. Now look at these two lines, these two sections of code next to each other. Here are three, let me move this mouse, here are three variables, an x, a y, and an r. They're standalone variables. We, I might conceptually think of them as a circle, an x, a y, and an r, but really they're just three separate variables. Now what I've done is made a JavaScript object called circle that has an x, a y, and an r in it. The reason why I've done that is because now I can say circles.push circle. Now look at that. I'm going to delete this, zoom back out, and look at this. And I'm going to comment this out. Now if I run this program, I don't see anything in the screen. I don't see anything in the canvas. But I did make all those circle objects and I put them in that array. So now look what I could do. Now I can say another loop from i goes from 0 to the length, and I'm going to put this code back. And what am I doing here? I'm actually saying draw, the, draw everything at, from the array. Each element of the array circles index i. Draw the circle at circles index i's x, circle index i's y, and then circles index i dot r times 2 and one more. So this line of code got a little bit long, but you can see, and I think I'm going to move this over and stretch this out. So, and now I run this, and you can see I have the same exact program I had before. The difference is, instead of simply drawing 25 random circles to the window, I've now created 25 circle objects, put them into an array, and then drawn all 25 of those to the window. The magic is here, Right here, maybe I shouldn't add every single random circle that I make to that array. Maybe I should only add circles here that don't overlap with other existing circles. Right? So, okay. So how do we do that? Well, one thing I need to do is say, right here, I need another loop. So look at this. This right here, this is my current circle. Does this, if this is my circle, is this a valid circle or not? Here is my loop where I'm going to say 
I'm going to compare this circle to everything else that's in the array. The first circle I pick, there'll be nothing in the array, so nothing will happen, and that circle will get added to the array. The second circle I pick, it'll just check it against the first one. If it's OK, it'll get added to the array. The third one I pick will get checked against the, the, two, the previous two, and the fourth one and the previous three, et cetera, et cetera. OK, so first thing I need to do is determine what is the distance between what? That current circle. And, and I'm going to, um, I'm just going to uh, put in, uh, I'm going to put the circle's index i into another variable. So the other circle, this is the current circle. I want to check its distance against other circles. And so I'm going to say other, other dot x, other dot y. If distance is less than circle dot r plus other dot r, then what? They, then they are overlapping. And I'm writing all caps because apparently I'm screaming that. So look, this is exactly what we need to do. We need to say for every circle, check if, check for the new circle, check its distance against every other circle and check if it's overlapping or not. If it's overlapping even one other circle, I can't use it. So, how do we determine if I'm looking at all the circles if it's overlapping at least one? Well, one way of doing that is to start with the assumption that it's not overlapping any of them. So I can say, OK, overlapping equals false. I'm going to start with the assumption that it is a valid circle. It's not overlapping anything. If it happens to be overlapping something, I can set overlapping equal to true, and I can actually just break out of the loop. Because as soon as it's overlapping one, it's an invalid circle. And now I can say, as long as it's still not overlapping after we've checked all the previous one, then put it into the array. So look at this. I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. What's the algorithm here? I'm going to do this, uh, sorry, sorry. Ah, I'm going to do this 25 times. I'm going to pick a circle. I'm going to assume it's not overlapping any other circles. I'm going to check to see if it's overlapping any other circle. And if it's overlapping one of those other circles, I'm going to set that Boolean variable to true. I'm done. And then you know, if I did actually get through that entire loop and I still didn't find it overlapping anything, then I can put it into the array. Now, there's still a little bit of a problem here, but this is pretty good. So now I'm going to run this. Uh, <laughs> can't read property x of undefined. So what did I miss? back now and <laughs> I restarted the p5.js editor and I also did notice the error here. So let's look at this. Um, uncaught type error, cannot read property x of undefined. So in a line 19, which is this particular line of code right here. So why, why is that error? What is this error? <laughs> so one thing that I did here you might notice is I have a loop i that is going 25 times. For every new circle that I'm going to make 25 times, I need to check every other circle, j. So what's the other circle? Not index i, but j. So what this needs to be here, this was just a mistake, um, this needs to be circles index j. Because this is the part where I'm checking the new circle proposal. I have a circle proposal, and I want to check that circle proposal against every other circle, uh, against every other circle j. OK, so uh, now we should be able to run this, and we should see, look at that. There are 25 circles, all not overlapping, because it can't add a circle if it overlaps one another. Let's make sure that's true. One, two, three, four, five. Let me move this over here. This is going to be oop, counting with me. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 15. Why are there only 15 circles? I did ask to do 25. And I have to scroll up to see that, right? I asked to do 25, but there's only 15. <laughs> the reason why there are only 15 is because some of the circles it picks overlap another one, and they don't get added. So this is not actually a loop that I want to do 25 times. I want to execute this loop until, until I have um, reached 25 circles in the array. So this loop can change while circles.length 
is less than 25, I need to keep trying to pick a circle. So this is just going to keep going. Pick a circle, it overlaps. Ah, pick a circle, it overlaps. Ah, pick a circle, it overlaps. Ah, pick a circle, ah, pick a circle. it doesn't overlap. Great. So now this is a little bit dangerous. <laughs> I'm going to hit save. It's a little dangerous because if I ever say why circles that length is less than 25, you know, it could be that it's just impossible for it to find a place where it could add a circle. But I think right now we can reasonably say it's going to be able to find 25 places on the screen. But let's just start with 15. And you can see, you know, each time I run this, we're probably reliably going to have 15 circles. And I'm going to make it 25 now. We can see that each time I run this, you can see reliably I'm getting 25 circles. And I would go through and count them. Um, I'm just going to have to assume that this is working. Now, however, if I were to change this to 300, I can almost for sure tell you this is going to crash. Let's just see what happens. Why not, right? Nobody, if you're like, who's watching this video still? <laughs> no, I don't. I'm going to run it. You can see I did, that's interesting that it, there's a bunch there, but you can see like I can't seem to, I can't seem to stop it. I'm, I'm surprised that it even drew anything at all because it should just sort of be stuck in this loop. Maybe that's like the previous one, but you can see that it's like completely stuck and I can't close it because I got an infinite loop. So the only thing I can do right now is force quit the P5 editor and relaunch it and uh, open up my sketch again called circles and set this number back to 25. But let's say we wanted to really push it. In the great words of code anti-code on Twitter, let's push it a little bit. <laughs> um, what if I wanted to push it and try to get as many circles as I could fit? Well, there's a variety of ways we could sort of think about doing this. But one thing I could do, and I'm going to make up a variable called my protection. I'm going to call it protection equals, uh, uh, equals zero. And uh, actually, what, um, you know, I, I was going to say there's so many different ways. <laughs> I thought of like a whole bunch of different ways of doing it. But you know, I'm going to do this the simplest way possible. Let's just say, I have a counter that goes up every time. And what I'm going to say is if protection is greater than 10,000, then I'm going to just break out of this loop. So what I'm essentially doing is saying that, you know what, I'm going to try to put 25 circles on the screen, but if I've tried like 10,000 times, it's probably not that the 10,000 and one time is going to get me those 25 circles. So I should be able to now run this. And you should see now, if I were to make this now 300, I'm going to save it again in case I screw that up. You can see, uh, you can see that it's kind of getting to the maximum. And 10,000 is kind of a big, big number, but you can see. So that's kind of a quick and dirty solution, at least. Um, and now that one thing we could do that's kind of nice here is maybe I could also um, think about giving these random sizes, like between 12 and 36. And whoops, uh, and you can see here we have a kind of nice, uh, a nice algorithm that fills our screen with circles of random sizes. And I'm sure, um, you know, I want you know, we could try to do something here, and I could make this fifty thousand, and I could see like it's going to take a while. It's running. It's got to like try this like fifty thousand times. You can see like it took a little while, but it gave us a nice, you know, in a way, circle packing algorithm. Just sort of a brute force. This is not an efficient way of doing this. Don't get me wrong, but it's sort of brute force algorithms that fill our screen with circles, um, none of them overlapping. So I will post this code in a link below with this video, kind of run through a few of the questions and issues around an algorithm like this. I'm sure there are lots of improvements that could be made to this and other questions that will arise. Um, this was a bit of a, this was not my finest video, but it, 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 it does have a result where you can see the circles. And so I will consider um, maybe doing a follow-up on this or, or something if there are some questions that you have in the comments you want to ask and make some improvements to this particular example. Okay, thanks for watching and see you soon. Uh, oops.